Dean, you obviously take a seven-point lead into um, the first break there, and then they come out with a 9-0 run. You call time. What did you sense happened at the start of that second quarter in terms of how they were able to get that momentum? Yeah, I don't quite remember what I was thinking at that time. Generally on the on the game, like we're going to be good enough defensively to put ourselves in a position to win. And again, we still hold them to forty percent and and some good things defensively. But you know, all the areas of the game that that we talked about tonight that we couldn't do, we we allowed. Um, you know, we just. We were really sloppy with the basketball, just our decision making tonight, and we just gifted them a lot of points. And then, and again, they capitalised on their their offensive rebounding as well. That second quarter, the um, you know we put them on the foul line quickly. You know, a lot of early a lot of early fouls, and then that allowed them to you know disrupt up the floor. And um, I look forward to watching the tape back you know, of the. 60 shots that we have um, where that's about 15 shots down on what we're trying to achieve um, I'm sure 40 of those possessions we don't even start in the right spots tonight and so that was, we just got disrupted from the start, credit Perth, they did a really good job with it um, and yeah, to me that was the biggest thing in the game is that we just found absolutely no rhythm to our offence and we couldn't, couldn't get started and it turned into a lot of Trying to play, trying to play one on one at different points because we were, we were broken down too quickly, and there was a there was an IQ factor to that tonight to say this is what they're taking away, this is how we counter it, and we we just weren't good enough in basketball reads tonight. A couple of the numbers you mentioned there, and obviously the, the 18 turnovers, and then you, that's 22 to nine points off turnovers. Did did you feel that? And you're always going to give Perth credit, obviously. But it did seem that a lot of those turnovers were kind of uncharacteristic for you guys, and they didn't seem forced exactly. What were you, what did you sort of sense in, in that area? Yeah, I thought, you know, some of them were obviously, you know, Chris had his couple on the break where, you know, it's just that that that, that isn't us. You know, we we want to attack. We want to, you know, put our feet in the paint. We And I thought we we probably just tried to, you know, get away from not making some of those aggressive decisions. They were, they were still aggressive, but were, there was too much distance in what we were trying to do. So, um, yeah, I think the, those, those parts are fixable. Um, you know, everything that we didn't do right tonight is is fixable, but, um, you know, moving the basketball out of an aggressive coverage in the on-ball, um, the way that they switched out and did things in our basketball reads there, um, you know, that, that, that area has just got to be way, way, way better. Chris, you were sort of shaking your head there when Dean mentioned the turnovers. When, when you're out on the floor and it does feel like the, the guys are just kind of out of sync, how do you try and shake out of that? Like, what was your sense? Did you sense anything before the game, during the game? What were you seeing out there? Oh, I was shaking my head because I was reliving, um, you know, some of those turnovers that personally I had, we had um, as, a, as a group. Um, and I just think, you know, after that first quarter, I, I just went passive. I just... Any opportunity to give the ball up, I, I tried to take it and bad passes that as soon as they left my hand, I knew it was a turnover, but I just continued to do it. So shaking my head at myself, um, to be honest, but, you know, as Dean said, they, they did a good job of taking out of our rhythm, taking us out of our rhythm. Um, you know, and they did that by scoring the ball fairly well after quarter time. Um, but even the opportunities where we play good defense, we rebounded the ball, we get out and run. We didn't run like us. We didn't, um, you know, we didn't attack the paint and get kickouts and, and anything like that on the break, which is where we want to get a lot of our stuff. So, um, yeah, super disappointing. But Perth had a good game plan. They came in and uh, executed it and it worked. So credit to them. And you guys, I mean, you guys have obviously been on a fair roll here. You win 11 in a row. You mean, it feels like the last few games particularly you've been playing the best you have all season long. So as a player, you've been here before. When you have a night like this where you feel like it's it's correctable, what what do you say to each other straight after the game and, and how do you sort of uh, respond to that? We spoke in the huddle at half court. We said, 
you know, there's probably some teams that are just watching this and licking their lips because they think they've figured out how to slow us down and how to stop us. So, um, and rightfully so after that performance. So we we go away, we review the game, we review the area, areas where we were really poor um, and we try and fix that. And then it's on us to come out in our next games and rectify it and, and play better. Um, so I would imagine we're probably going to see more of what we saw tonight and rightfully so. Um, but we got to get back to um, doing what, what's what been working for us and, and, and not get bored with the things that have been making us successful. Uh, Dean, you mentioned the defense at the top, and I think you know, you'd know you probably take five to 17 from Bryce on the night, and McDaniel got the job to start, then you had Baba running a little bit, Shea Ely as well. Just in general, how did you think the, the defense handled Bryce tonight? Yeah, I, th I thought our plan on how we wanted to cover him um, was fairly effective. Part of part of that is is not allowing him to get to the foul line, and I'm not sure what, what he got. You know, that's that's reasonable to to keep him off the line uh, like that. You know, the, obviously he he was his ability for us to you know shift off some guys and pro provide some support when when he was driving and. Um, you know, credit to Mooney. He, he, he was one of the guys that um, we helped off a bit and make a late recovery. And um, you know, he shot the basketball extremely well tonight. And you know, he, he was he was massive and a big part of why Bryce has ten assists there. Um, yeah, we'll we'll go back and look at it. You know, there's there's still a couple of other coverages that we've got for him that we that we want to try out as well. So you know, we'll see how they go in the next couple of games. And Jock comes back in. He, he looks like he was in pretty good touch, especially in the second uh, quarter there offensively, but then he, he gets in foul trouble. Uh, the other part of that, that sort of that I want to bring up, you bring in Jones to the starting lineup. Those two guys start. How did you see that combination? Do you expect that's something you're going to look to, to continue with? Yeah, I think we've got options. Um, for that who's, Who starts at the four? You know, Mason's obviously done a really good job. Um, you know, we've obviously play hop a little bit at four. There's going to be some teams that have got, you know, really uh, smaller fours that, um, you know, he might match up on really well. So, you know, we got we got plenty of options with that one. But, you know, you got to reward Joe for the way that he played um, the last couple of games. And, um, you know, he's, he's versatile to be able to play four or five. And then, you know, we, we saw the rebounding as a massive uh, part of the game tonight. So having those two... Um, in the game that our two best rebounders um, we, we hope that that could um, you know really ignite some of our transition game but um, you know I thought I thought the first quarter we were pretty good but um, you know only to score 19 when when we were pretty good I thought there was, there was really a good opportunity to put 25 26 up in, in that first quarter and um, yeah but yeah, second quarter we just couldn't make a change. I used timeouts really quickly, and we just couldn't um, we couldn't make a change, and they shot it well. Um, you just mentioned going back and looking at this one uh, a little bit in, in the little time that you have. Uh, that's probably I don't know if it feels like a good matchup to now play the Phoenix after a couple of days after a loss that you're disappointed with. This has been obviously a rivalry that's that's building between you guys. Um, and it's a big game, obviously. Yeah, every, every time it's a throwdown, it's a massive game for us and we'll always, you know, rise to the occasion. And, um, yeah, but I don't want to move on yet. You know, I'm disappointed that, you know, you know Perth are the champs and, um, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't turn up and, and play the right way against them tonight. And we knew that them coming off a loss in, in Tassie, that, you know, they, what they would bring tonight and we just we weren't able to match it. So uh, both in IQ and in, in some effort areas. Chris, you got a question? Yeah, just a couple quickly, Dean. Um, first of all, how much of a positive is it now that you've got your full group available and hopefully now in the run to the playoffs you can keep this group together and, and get that chemistry going? Yeah. Um, you know, I think we're all, obviously, you know, we, we changed our roles around a little bit tonight with with, with Joe starting and, and things. But, yeah, it, it's... There's still, you know, we've got. Shay just hasn't quite got back to where he wants to get to yet, and um, you know, and these other, everybody else's health is is really good, and even Jack White had a real positive um, um, visit to the 
to the uh, surgeon today, and so he's on he's on track with him. So yeah, the groups, you know, we're healthy, even though we got playing these lot of games. It was it was just more a bit of a mental thing for us tonight, and we'll look back and we'll just say because our decision making just wasn't on point, and so we'll just look at our recovery and uh, did we do everything right to mentally be in the right space and and make sure that we 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 come out on um, for the throwdown in a much better headspace. Just the last one from me, and you're probably not in the mood to think about it right now, but you're always going to be very close to linked with, with Andre Lamont. As far as your reaction to finding out that you won't be coaching in the league anymore as of next season? Yeah, really, you know, obviously you want to see people have different basketball experiences, and Andre's already always sought um, you know opportunities in the game and you know he's had an amazing career um, you know we had a we had a wonderful time over in New Zealand together and such a special special time over there with him and I, I loved what he did for the national team and um, you know and, and getting the bullets program going again so to go over and and from what I understand I think he's going to start up a, a fairly new program over in Japan and um, you know and lock into that for a few years and um, you know, so happy for him to go. I texted him today and said, "Let's have a beer when we go up to Brisbane and, and catch up." And because yeah, you know, kind of like you know, it's me and Trevor. It's kind of like the older guys in the league right now. You know, we lost Bevo, we lost Joey. Now we're losing, um, and now we're losing Andre. Obviously, gorgeous come back and stuff. But um, yeah, I loved coaching with him. I loved competing against him. Um, you know, he'll be a huge loss to our our coaches group as well. You know, whenever there was an issue about um, with the coaches, he was one to to certainly stand up and and make sure that um, you know coaches were protected as much as as we could without a, a coaches association. And and we're going to miss his input into um, you know to how the game evolves in the NBL and and how you know coaches are protected as well. So huge loss to our league. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Any final questions, guys? We're all good. Thanks, Jens.